Welcome back to Open Studio. Okay. Ah, should have checked. I'm not 100% sure who who caught it, mentioned it um, when I was working on the painting and I was kind of rubbing on this thing and I scratched it. Uh, they nailed it. So these gloves, I use them. They're just regular cotton gloves. I use them till they wear out. And um, what's happening is sometimes right on the pinky, the glove will pull apart on the threads and those threads are a little bit more abrasive than the cotton and when you do this with the glove on and those threads are exposed they'll just scratch the really lightest layers of paint which is a bummer now the good news is i know that now so don't do that all right let's get right to it we are kind of homing in on this thing now which is exciting so what i need to do at this point i've got it all blocked in. i've got all the dark areas kind of roughly put in here so that's good so what I got to do now is there's a lot of patina that needs to go on this, uh, the the running board here, um, the patina that's happening on here, uh, so the the controls as well, things like that. You know, it needs to have a little bit of that um, patina put on before I put the details on. The details are really the last thing, and we'll kind of tie it together. So I think that's going to be the plan of attack. So got the palette cam on just in case. I need to make the palette cam bigger, don't I? Me, um, <laughs> I'm moving the palette as if that's going to move the um, <laughs> camera. Oh boy, give me two seconds here. I'm going to straighten this out as soon as... What's going on here? If this... There we go. Okay. I want to come over. That's what I want to do. can't remember which one is the right way. Ah, uh, forget it. I'm not going to mess with it because we need to get this done. All right. I'll fix it between the next episodes. Um, we'll just make the palette cam bigger. Okay. So first thing, let's start with the patina on this. It's kind of a yellow ochre, which is pretty easy. So I'll grab the brush. And I think just mix up a dirty yellow ochre. I think that's going to work. Or I could... So what's happening here is there's... It's kind of a yellow ochre, but there's also a real dark detail in it. So yeah, I think I'll just do the yellow ochre. And then add the dark to it because I gotta finish shading that anyway, so this will work out well. As always, so this is straight up uh, detail yellow ochre. Make sure I get in the camera there. Detail yellow ochre, and because it's you know the regular Wicked line, I usually add a little bit of um, 4050 and 4011 to it. So I'm just gonna probably go about. I don't know. It's probably about, I would say it's a hundred percent reduction. It's one drop of um, yellow ochre and one drop of that reduction mix. But, um, but you know, you're dealing with so, such small amounts of paint, it's hard to actually give you an accurate, you know, a perfect percentage. Let me make sure we're focused here. Okay. All right. Reference. We're good. All right. So this whole area. Now I did put some yellow ochre in this originally when I was kind of blocking the whole thing out when I was doing the front forks. But uh, but now I can kind of finish up the job. The yellow ochre is very, I mean, it doesn't look very bright in the bottle, but it is very bright when you airbrush it. So I got to be kind of careful not to put too, too much of this on because... Um, like I said, it's super yellow. It doesn't look yellow in the bottle. It looks kind of, you know, I don't know, like a dirty yellow, but it's not. It's brilliant when you airbrush it on a, especially on a white surface. Now, this says a bunch of stuff on it already. Some, you know, darker overspray and that kind of stuff. Um, so that helps, but, uh, but yeah, it, this can be a, a brilliant, brilliant yellow if you, uh, it's like a real golden yellow, which is why I like it so much. All right, so anything in the dark here has a lot of that. I'm just going to bump up the yellow ochre that's down on these parts, too. A lot of brown on this stuff down here, which is great because that yellow ochre mixes with that and just kind of pushes it over to the yellow side. This area right here looks awful yellow right now, but once I get the... This is really dark in here. So once I get the, uh, the browns and the, the blacks in here, 
that's really going to tone that down. I just want to kind of make sure I have plenty of that yellow so I don't have to come back in and reapply it after. What else do I got it on? A little bit on this stuff here. Yellow ochre is notoriously bad when it comes to spraying too. It's a real gummy color, uh, so it takes a little bit of... Um, that, that 4050 really helps a lot, not only to help it stick when you over reduce it, but it also smooths it out too. So it's just a good, like I said, even if I was just kind of getting ready to spray it, even through a bigger brush, I'd probably still add a little bit of 4050 to it to spread it out a little bit and help it spray. All right, uh, the cylinders, there's no yellow. Uh, oh, back here, there's yellow though. I get all this yellow and that was too much and I flooded it out, but that is pretty dark in the end so I'm not going to worry too much about it. If I were to put on too much yellow uh, at this point I can always erase it. There's so much detail that's going to be going on this thing. Um, since I've got the yellow in the brush I just want to double check everything. If there's anything else that needs it. This little this nut up here. Which is that off the screen? Yeah it's off the screen. There's a little nut at the top of this. Um, needs it too. But I think that's good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Just double checking everything. Good. Okay. I think the next... I gotta get darker on that too. Alright. Uh, the next thing is gonna be a blue. Like that steel blue is one of those common colors. Again, it appeared all over the place while I'm cleaning out the brush. I'll slide this over so you can see it. But on the front fender there, all that blue. You know, that's, that's a real common theme throughout this painting, which is great. It, subtly ties things together you know it, it represents that raw metal that hasn't corroded that either from you know just being out in the in the um, abrasions of life or whatever but it's not you know it's that steel that's not corroded up so that that happens a lot here and there depending on the material there's a tag on this thing that um, I gotta get into which is very blue all right why I'm having technical issues over here. You guys can't see it, but the uh, software that runs the switcher that allows all these cameras to work is intermittently disconnecting. Again, it's not going to make a difference to you, but it, for instance, it makes it, it makes it really impossible for me to change the size of the palette cam while that's doing that. So I will figure that out. All right. Next is blue. Well, steel blue. Um, do I have steel blue? No. So I'll have to mix one up. Okay, so we'll do this from the palette because I don't need a lot of this. So I want to make sure I have some. Um, let's go with blue violet. I need, or no, cobalt blue. I need Createx to come out with a, um, a, a blue that's not green shade. The phthalo blue is amazing there. Opaque phthalo blue. This one here. Is a great blue, but it has a green shift to it, and it's you can't see it there on that little, you know, a little smudge. It looks actually blue, but when you spray this, it has a real green cast to it. So I need a real cool blue, um, like a blue violet ish type of opaque. But sure, why not? They, you know, they just make make me everything I want. <laughs> All right. Let me put this. So I'm going to start this time since I only need a tiny, tiny bit of paint. I'm going to start with three or four drops of the reducer mix. And this one is uh, one to five. So it's one part uh, 40, 50, and five parts reducer. And I already put that out, so I need a little bit of the blue. Let's grab a brush for this. Tiny bit of blue. This is going to be more of a like a tint color, I guess. So I need a little bit of the blue. And now to, because this is really thin and transparent, I'm going to need a little bit of white to um, bump that up. And then that's going to give me this brilliant blue, almost like daylight blue. So the daylight blue is great. It's cooler, but it's also much lighter. It's like this value. So it's, you can't really use it as a primary blue a lot. And then I um, accidentally added too much water to my wet palette. That's why all the black is kind of everywhere down here. Uh, which is unfortunate because what I'm going to have to do between this and the next episode is pull out the the parchment, which is unfortunate because it's pretty new. Um, so I'll have to throw away the parchment and then I'll have to go rinse out the, the uh, membrane underneath. 
because there's black paint now on it. It's it went off the side here and ended up on the membrane, which is not cool because if it you know, if it dries there, then it just impedes the membrane from doing its job. So again, if you have a wet palette, don't add too much water to it. All right, so there you go. So it's kind of a steel blue now. I might have to lighten this up a little bit, but we'll figure it out. Okay, there's a lot on here. Not a lot, but there's a bunch of this that's going on. So we'll see what we can get out of this. See if I, oh yeah, that's right. Do that again. I gotta put magnets on the bottom. Because when you're working near the edge, like it happened before, the air gets underneath the magnet that's holding the board on and it just falls. So we don't need that happening. All right, so start up here. You know, this way I can kind of test out that blue. And that is lovely. I don't have to do anything to it. I love it when that happens. So because I have the opaque white in here, that adds just enough opacity that I can really kind of start, you know, cutting in those edges a little bit. If this was just the blue, I wouldn't be able to do that because it would be transparent. It would actually mix with all the other colors that are on there, which is fine if that's what you're going for. However, um, it is not what we're going for here. Now, this may even be too aggressive, which is lovely. I'm going to really lightly just kind of put some of this blue around where it needs to be. And again, this I said the blue is aggressive, meaning I could thin this down a little bit more because it's, it's, it's hitting very hard, basically. Uh, as I'm putting it on, it's like there's not a lot of transparency to it, which is lovely. I mean, it works out great if I'm doing stuff like this down here where I have to pull out that, you know, that shape. But in an instance like above where I was just trying to tint this a little bit on the blue side, it's difficult to do that because it just wants to come out and cover everything. So it's tough to it's tough to do that. It's tough to like get get a balance where the paint does everything. But that's okay too. You know, I don't I don't really need it to do everything. All right, so let me shove this down a little bit so you can see this here. So this needs a lot of that blue too. And I haven't really touched that since the beginning of the painting. So that's okay too. And then um, these cylinder heads too have a kind of a bluish cast to them. And this is a nice time to do that. Now again, this has this blue has an ability to cover. So I did all the details on the, you know, on the spaces between. And I, I don't want to just lose them all. Now I'm going to end up getting some overspray on them. So I'll have to kind of redo them. But, um, but that's okay. Ideally what should have happened is I should have done the blue before I did the details on it. And now you see why, because now I'll have to redo the details to um, to fix that. But again, in the in the long haul, it's not a big deal. You guys see where I'm at? Yeah, I'm gonna do the same thing on these these um, these fins over here. Oh uh, yeah, definitely gonna have to redo the details between them, but that's okay. Okay, good. Good, good, good. And same thing. Now I run around and check to see if there's any blue that I need to get. Yeah, this this whole whatever this is needs to be more blue. Again, I'm kind of trying not to get the blue on the darker areas around it, but it's inevitable unless I mask it off, and I don't need to do that because I'm gonna. I still get a lot of um, you know detail darks to put in here so i'm not i gotta go go through it anyway so it doesn't really matter all right anywhere else i think that's good all right yeah so everything's blocked in now i feel good about that so i think what i'm doing is i'm just kind of getting to the point now where I could start like really finishing it off, like adding those details that will finish it off. But I think I need to hit it with black a little bit first. So ideally the, the, the detail, the paintbrush stuff comes as a second to last step. So as long as I can go back in with the airbrush after that and blend all those paintbrush things together, that's really what I'm, what I want. I know that, you know, has its exceptions as everything does. So if I'm just putting one light bright highlight on something, you know, white, obviously it's a paintbrush is the last step. 
not well again even there not always because if that bright white highlight has a little bit of a glow to it i'll put the highlight in and then hit it with a little soft airbrush and it'll look like it's glowing so i guess i guess there is no <laughs> there is no one size fits all incidentally in this episode i have the grex trigger pad back on my iwatas i go back and forth on on using these and what i find is if i've spent a, a like a like this week i did a lot of airbrushing and my hand actually really you know my especially my index finger hurts after doing that much airbrushing and i actually lose a little bit of control that way because of just the ache of you know putting in that many hours so this pad really helps to kind of alleviate that because it changes the geometry of the way my finger uses the trigger it's still really sensitive i can still kind of do everything i can you know normally do but um but the pad is much bigger and softer now so that it doesn't have the same impact and again i have a real like death grip on on brushes when i'm doing tight detail work it's something i just have a really hard time shaking uh, so this pad helps to alleviate that it's why there's so much fatigue at the end of the week for me all right so what am i doing i was gonna do black a little bit of black yeah i'm gonna take the one to ten mix with this and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna tighten this up as hard as i can or as most as much as i can with the airbrush and then that way I'll know what's left on the paintbrush to do with the paintbrush to do. So I'm going to basically start since we got the motor, everything else is pretty much done. So I'm going to start with the right under the tank and I'm just going to kind of hit this in as many places as I can and move down the motor. That's going to be the, the way it's going to kind of come together. All right. So the one to 10 with this brush is extremely, I mean, I, you know, I can do just about paintbrush strokes with this setup. So again, this is the, the beauty of it. You know, I can get almost paintbrush-like strokes, or not even, I can get paintbrush strokes, but I can almost get Winsor Newton size, double zero size strokes, which is, which is good, because if I can get the airbrush to do just about everything and then come in and pop in the details with the paintbrush, then I win. And I win because it's now difficult to tell, you know, what I used. And that, for me, is the goal. I should really, hold on. I have stuff all over my uh, tablet. Can't see what I'm doing. So it's all about now just tightening up edges. Since I really kind of loosely blocked it in. You know, grabbing any details that I can. And you know what? It, with this, because it's so dark and it's kind of tucked in to the motor, I may not even need to grab the paintbrush for some of this. In fact, I know I won't need to grab the paintbrush for some of this. Because some of this that's in, you know, like these, these little attachments at the top of the head, they're in the shadow anyway. So, you know, they're kind of soft. You know, they don't have a super hard edge because they're in that shadow. So the airbrush does that exceptionally well. I can do the, all the shading and now things like this coiled tube here, this is very bright. It's gonna need like bright highlights that I'm not gonna do with the airbrush because the paintbrush does that better, you know? But all this stuff, like all the shading between the fins here, this is all perfect category for uh, the airbrush to do a lot of you know micro small soft fades and things like that just just perfect of course there are a million ways to do this you know I could complete each section as I go you know instead of blocking it in I could just block in this little section right here and then do all the details on that and then move on to this and then you know do the same thing you treat them each as little tiny paintings and sometimes I do that but sometimes you know it's it again it's it's it, with a long haul painting like this it's really all about you know trying to keep myself motivated and interested in it in it one of the nicest side things that has happened because of this open studio now, I only work a half an hour on this painting at a time. 
And sometimes, like you know, as I've said before, I'll you know record three episodes in a row, but still, that's only an hour and a half. So sometimes with a painting that, especially if it needs to be done, uh, I'll spend you know eight or nine hours or ten hours on a painting in one shot, and that I don't care what painting it is, man. Sometimes you just need a break. So that's the, one of the nice things about the open studio painting is it has to be broken down into these half an hour sections, and that's been really nice like i've never even though this painting is you know uh, there's a lot to it and i've been kind of hammering on this for what 30 hours now it doesn't feel like it because because i'm only taking it in small spots small bits so i guess there's your um takeaway from that if you have a painting that you don't have to get done and it's enormous then try breaking it up, really breaking it up and being okay that it's going to take a lot longer, like overall time. You know, I could have, could have just put everything on this painting and had it done in two weeks, you know. But I don't want to hate my life. <laughs> so... Again, so this is all about tightening up. Now the edges like in this area, so the again, the airbrush, airbrush does things soft, it does things fuzzy, and sometimes you don't want fuzzy, so especially like on the edge here, I wanna make sure that that, that um, bolt attachment is has the um, sharpest edge that it needs. And hold on, that's not the template I want. I just had it, stop it, there it is. This template has a straight edge on it, which is nice. These are the, I don't know, I've showed these before. These are the uh, Nail Master templates. So these are the templates made for fingernail painting, but they work freaking awesome. So straight edge on this. And again, this little template right here will give me that really tight, sharp edge that I need for that piece of frame there. And the, you know, I mean, the other side of it too is I could grab the paintbrush and do that edge and then paint up against it. So that's another way to do it. It's just, right now I don't want to put down the airbrush. So there it is. And that's, that's nice and sharp and just what we need. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> what else am I doing? Everything, okay. As psychologically nice is it to have the whole thing blocked in right now? Um, when you start digging into these details, you still realize how far you have to go. It's like, oh, I didn't do any of this yet. <laughs> and that's okay. At this point now, because it's all blocked in, I can really kind of just concentrate on everything else that needs to be done. The hard part, of course, at this stage right now is I really want this painting done, right? Well, I want it to be done right, but that's not what I meant. I was asking a question there. I want it to be done right, but um, I also want it to be done. And the, the trap is, of course, you get to the point where you start cutting corners at the, or at least I do, I got to stop myself from cutting corners at the end just to say, hey, this is done. You know what I mean? So that's that's what I got to watch out for, especially here, because the details are the most tedious. And the last thing you want to be doing after kind of the long haul is something tedious, you know. So just got to keep it keep it in, in perspective and make sure that everything gets the same attention. That's that's the goal. If it doesn't, if I feel like I've cut a corner somewhere, then I need to back up and write that wrong essentially because i really what's the point man if you spend all this time on something and then the last you know you cut off the last couple hours then really i mean that's that's that sucks because you know what that's the part you're going to look at when you look at it you're going to see the part that you said hey you know that looks good i'm done make sure yeah I'm just about off the camera so I don't want to do that <coughs> there we go 
Again, most of this area down on the motor here is kind of in the shadow, so it works out really, really well. There's not a whole lot of paintbrush work to be done down here. There is some, and I, you know, like the highlights and stuff that I've already got on these nuts. Um, you know, stuff like that, obviously, you know, paintbrush is category four. But, um, but yeah, you listen to the reference, you know, you watch the reference and let it determine what you're doing if you want it photorealistic or realistic in general. I needed some blue on this, but that might be a corner I can cut. That might be okay. So this black, again, I mentioned it. When it's reduced like this, it's stupid reduced. So like one part paint to ten parts reducer is serious. Like Createx is crying at, right now with what I'm telling you guys to do. I'm not telling you guys to do it, but I'm showing that it works this way. It is far, far, far over reduced for, for you know what they recommend. But with this brush and that reduction, not only can I build it up to full opacity, but I can also get, again, I can get paintbrush-like strokes out of this. With this brush, again, I can't stress that enough. If I grab my big old, you know, whatever, BCS or something, you know, 0.5 millimeter brush or my big 0.7 Grex or whatever, um, 1 through 10 is going to be just ridiculous. It's, it's not going to work at all. So... Say it again and again and again. You reduce for the brush first and then reduce for what you want it to do. This is lovely. It's all nice and dark in here, which is perfect. So for the stuff in the motor here, this is really dark. Like if you squint your eyes on the um, this area right here, if you squint your eyes on the reference photo, almost all of this disappears. I could paint it all black. I could just paint it all black and, and it would still look fine. My uncle taught me a really cool thing um, with with something like that. The First of all, the you, you get the most details outside of the strongest light. So if you have a highlight hitting something, anything like a car or a face or whatever, and it's super strong light on, on that side of it. Th all the details get washed out. Our eyes can't process it, and it just, it looks like, you know, looks uniform, essentially. It's in the darker areas where, where we see all the details. So subconsciously, when we look at a painting or a photograph, our eyes are drawn to that dark area because we know we're going to see the details in those darker areas. So if you just blast this in with dark and leave it with nothing there you're almost like cheating the viewer you know you don't have to like have a zillion details in there but you give them something to land on in those really super dark areas and uh and and i guarantee it's it's the weirdest thing our eyes are just drawn to those areas so it's a good way to kind of pay off your uh viewers who are looking at your work you give them you give them the thing that they're looking for that little tab in there should have been blue as well, but um, I'm not going to worry about that yet. So I'll probably have to pull out the blue at some point. Okay, there's a lot of, there's some paintbrush detail on here. There's a, uh, looks like the, it might even be the VIN. Oh no, they have VIN back in the 1900s? I don't know. Or it might have been added out. I don't know. I don't know. But in any, in any event, there's a tag here with a some sort of really long number on it. So I'm going to skip that for now because I because I got to deal with that separately. So I'll just keep working on everything around it. I'll try to do all the paintbrush stuff together, I guess. You guys, we're almost we're, we're like close. This is this is like end end of the line here. So you guys made it. I'm excited. So down here where the, oh, I'm off the page. There we go. Let's try that again. Yeah, why don't we pick this up on the next episode? I hate to leave you hanging, but that's, you know, what I got to do. <laughs> what we're going to do is when we come back, I'm going to jump in and, and do this, this area here. So that what's nice is you'll see this bright yellow turn into something completely different. 
Uh, and we'll get to that on the next one. So come back next week. Um, we're getting close. Uh, love you guys. You guys are awesome. If you're enjoying it, click that like and subscribe. And if you're really having a blast, you know, you want to become a what could go wrong member, <laughs> just uh, click the membership. Um, it's brand new. So right now um, I'm working on getting early access for some of these videos, especially the open studio. And then um, as, as things grow, we're going to get some other fun components with that too. So I am Steve Leahy. This is Open Studio. Thank you guys. You guys are the best and I will catch you all next time.